It's easy to take skin for granted, focusing on how it looks and being unaware of how it functions. Skin Anatomy The skin is complex and is the largest organ in the body. It has a surface of about 1.5 to 2 square meters and weighs 4 to 5 kilograms, around 9 to 11 pounds, in the average adult. Structurally, the skin consists of two main layers, an outer and thinner epithelial tissue layer called the epidermis and a deeper and thicker connective tissue layer called the dermis. The basement membrane is an interface between the dermis and epidermis. It both separates the epithelium from the underlying connective tissue and anchors the epithelium to the dermal matrix. The epidermis. The epidermis forms a protective barrier with the outside world. This paper-thin layer of epithelial tissue protects the body from physical injury, pathogens, sunlight, and harmful substances. It prevents loss of fluids from internal environment. It allows us to feel touch, temperature, and pain and it synthesizes vitamin D. The major cells of the epidermis are keratinocytes, melanocytes, immune cells, and nerve cells. The keratinocytes produce keratin, a protein that gives the epidermis its protective properties, durability, and water resistance. Melanocytes produce a pigment called melanin, which is responsible for skin color, tanning, and protection against ultraviolet radiation. Immune cells detect foreign substances and defend the body against infection, and nerve cells form a sensory receptor for touch. Keratinocytes originate in the deepest part of the epidermis called the basal layer. The basal layer consists of a single layer of basal cells that continuously divide. As new cells are formed, older cells are slowly pushed toward the skin surface. During the journey, keratinocytes fill themselves with keratin, become strongly connected to each other and flatten. At the end of their migration, keratinocytes become less active and eventually die. The upper layer of the epidermis consists on average of 15 to 30 layers of flattened, strongly interconnected, dead, keratinized cells. At the surface of the skin, dead cells generally remain for two weeks and are continuously shed and replaced by cells from the deeper layers. This arrangement places the deeper layers of the skin and underlying tissues beneath a protective barrier of dead, durable, and expendable cells. The dermis. The epidermis is connected to the dermis, an underlying layer of tough, leathery, flexible connective tissue, which supports the epidermis and serves as its source of nutrition. The main component of the dermis is collagen, which represents 70% of dry skin weight and serves as the major stress-resistant material of the skin. Unlike the epidermis, the dermis is largely a complex three-dimensional network of non-living fibers between its widely spaced cells. The major cells of the dermis are fibroblasts, immune cells, and fat cells. The fibroblasts are fiber-producing cells. They migrate through the dermis, secreting collagen and elastin fibers, and produce a viscous fluid known as the ground substance. Together, the fibers and ground substance make up the extracellular matrix which surrounds the cells. Collagen and elastin fibers provide support, physical strength, and the stretch-recoil properties of skin. The ground substance, which consists of 70% water, fills the space between the capillaries, cells, and fibers. It functions as a medium through which molecules diffuse between the blood capillaries and the cells. The water in the ground substance is in constant motion. It is continuously mixed between the blood and the tissue fluids by diffusion through the capillary walls. The ground substance contains thousands of ingredients including oxygen, amino acids, sugars, fatty acids, vitamins, salts, waste products, and regulatory substances such as hormones. To remain healthy, each skin cell must extract from this mix the exact amounts of the substances it needs at specific times. Based on its tissue structure, the dermis can be divided into the superficial papillary dermis and the deeper reticular dermis. The papillary layer is a thin, loosely woven mat formed by fine interlacing collagen and elastin fibers that are tightly connected to the epidermis. Finger-like projections called dermal papillae extend to the epidermis to strengthen connection and increase the surface contact between two layers of skin. 
The papillary layer has a rich supply of small blood vessels serving as the source of nutrition for the overlying epidermis, which does not have its own blood vessels. Water with dissolved oxygen, nutrients, vitamins, and hormones is filtered out of the dermal capillaries into the ground substance, and then the molecules diffuse into the cells of the overlying basal layer, allowing the keratinocytes to divide, grow, and develop. The deeper reticular layer of the dermis is an interwoven meshwork of collagen and elastic fibers, accounting for about 80% of the thickness of the dermis. This is the tough layer in animal hides from which leather is made. The reticular dermis has fewer cells and relatively few blood vessels. It contains hair follicles, oil glands, and sweat glands. Bundles of collagen fibers extend superficially beyond the reticular layer to blend into those of the papillary layer, so the boundary between the two layers is indistinct. Collagen fibers of the reticular layer also extend into the hypodermis. The hypodermis. The hypodermis, or subcutaneous layer, lies deep to the dermis and attaches the skin to underlying muscles while still allowing independent movement. Technically, the hypodermis is not part of the skin. It consists of loose connective tissue and fat tissue. The hypodermis houses larger blood vessels and nerves that bring nourishment and sensation to the skin. The fat tissue serves as a storage site for fat and provides insulation which helps reduce heat loss.